Um, the major problem that I have is that people don't recognize Will. In fact, when, when uh, the second stage comes along, what's happening? The first stage, what's the second stage? What's the third stage? So between here and here is really where we want to walk. That's a lot of will to get to this stage. It may be two, three weeks before we get to this stage. We've got to learn the, the plant. What, what happens with the other thing? When plants start getting too little water, what do they do? This is some of his doing. What do they do? They throw leaves away. If I can't support the leaf, the easiest thing to do is get rid of it. When the plant's yellow, people go, ah, oh, I need to water it more. No. No, we don't need to water it more. If you let it, go ahead and pitch off some leaves. Then, then it takes care of itself naturally. It survives. We want the strongest to survive. That's the ground cover. That's where I'm talking. And you can just destroy the, that concept by overwatering your first wonderful plants and you get the dump just water them. that. My neighbor does that. It just sits. <laughs> now, what about Bob Webster's theory that he talks about watering like tomatoes and peppers? If they're wilted at night, not to worry about it, but if they're still wilted later in the morning the next day, then you get it wilted in the morning, get it Yeah. If they're not wilted, don't walk. And that's the hardest thing to do is look at a plant at night that's wilted and say, you'll be fine tomorrow. Yeah. But it's interesting to do it because they do. I mean, I've watched it. Yeah. Yeah. So I go to bed and I go, man, I'm out of water. It's coming less water. I'm going to get fine. Another thing, less watering means less disease. Yeah. When that's under water more, you invariably have more disease. In fact, this year, no, excuse me, last year, last year about this time. I got a phone call. I got sick more dying. He said, I'm, I'll save you time and money and I can come out. It's probably in practice. He said, I've had people look at it. It's not in practice. I said, okay, I'm, I'm curious. I'll go look at it. So I drive up and you can see this tree way down the block. And so I'm focused on this tree, you know, watching the road just enough so I don't get anything. Pull up next to the curb, step out of the truck and I get a squish. The tree was dying because it was over water. A sycamore, mind you. A plant that normally grows in the bottom of a creek. Dying. And the, the property owner said, what do I do? And I said, turn off your irrigation system. I did that at Wilton. I said, you're going to kill everything else out here if you don't stop water. you got to fight top. And it's spreading and spreading fast. And I said, your first tree that died was a sick. That's why it's sick. Shut off the water. You shut it off, you didn't have to water the entire month. This really happened. Tree survived? Tree survived. It didn't look as good. It still had like top row. We did some uh, composting on it. It was like a good body composting. Chemical fertilizers steal water. They steal water. How do they steal water? Chemically. Huh? Chemically. Chemically. <laughs> Chemically. They steal water because they kill microbes. They kill plants. If I were to take sulfuric acid and pour it on your pants right here, what would happen? It'd heat a hole in your leg. Not just the pants, but the leg as well. So then what happens? Your leg is burning. You your tissue is will. dying. <laughs> You're going to start feeling pretty bad yourself. It gets infected. You lose your leg. Same thing happens with chemical fertilizers. You put chemical fertilizer on. It kills tissue. It kills living organisms. They get diseases. And then it Dying progression continues. Even if you water it in, a little bit. even if you water it in, a salt is a salt is a salt. 
there are some good salts and there are some bad salts. Most chemicals are bad salts, and they let them still work. Okay. I think I've covered everything on the list. I'm telling you all the stories, but I'm not going to tell you This is that one's thing that I did for our video. It's kind of confusing. I'm not going to tell you about the video. I'm not going to tell you about the video. I'm not going to tell you about the video. I'm not going to tell you about the video. He's confused because he does. He's, he's basically ignorant. I'm sorry, but he is. Who's ignorant? Yeah, get this on tape. A guy that talks about chemicals on one hand, and organics, on the other hand, is basically ignorant. And I can plead ignorance because I used to do it on the radio myself. And then I started really studying organics. And I was fully convinced, and I still am, that nothing works better. Nothing works better. I say that unqualified. Nothing works better. So, if you're not organic food farming, you're robbing yourself of the water if you have a problem. That's why the word market strength or contaminated disease can be true. Yeah. In fact, that's why Austin decided to hire Texas AM to do research on chemical fertilizer. And, in fact, all fertilizers. That's a conflict of interest. Huh? That's a conflict of interest. <laughs> well, yeah, it is. They, they gave money to AM and they had to take it because they're a state agency versus a, a government agency. And so they, they did the research and they took organic fertilizers and they took chemical fertilizers and they compared them. They put them on a grassy slope and measured the water that infiltrated through the ground and saw what came out the bottom. They measured the water that ran off the slope. And they took whatever came off and they measured that. And what they found was that all the chemical fertilizers had water that ran off the top and into a cup, and ran through the soil profile and into a cup, and so the chemical was still there. The organics they were held in the soil and in the vegetation. They actually purified the water. Gee, so which one do you think you want to use? Which one would you want to drink the water after having it gone through? We already know today that we're finding chemical deposits in the Guadalupe River from people taking medications and urinating it out. It goes into a waste treatment plant and it's still going into the river. And then that's picked up and somebody else drinks it downstream and McQueenie, Seguin, Gonzalez, all the way to Victoria. So is this a good thing? I think not. Get started now.